Hello Calc 3, welcome back to another video, the last video for chapter 15, uh, where we're just covering the second half of section 15.8 um, for substitutions in triple integrals. So last video, we developed how to use coordinate transformations to help us evaluate uh, a bunch of different double integrals. And in this video, we generalize this methodology to functions of three variables. Okay, so most of the... Uh, most of the information here, especially before the examples, is going to look very similar to the information from the previous video. Uh, we're really just adding an extra dimension. So the cylindrical and spherical coordinate substitutions from section 15.7, uh, they just end up being particular instances of a substitution method using coordinate transformations of three-dimensional regions. So this is analogous to what I said about polar coordinates uh, and what we did in section 15.4 for double integrals. So the method to use uh, coordinate transforma transformations in three dimensions is just like the method that we used for two dimensions. Again, we just add on another coordinate. We just have another variable floating around. Okay, so let's let uh, D be some region in space, specifically the uh, Cartesian XYZ space. And suppose a region G is transformed into the region D by differentiable equations. So here we have our uh, region D over in Cartesian XYZ space. And over here we have our region G in Cartesian UVW space. And we have transformations that are mapping this box G uh, into the region D in XYZ space by the differentiable equations X equals G of UVW, Y equals H of UVW, and Z equals K of UVW. So notice here we have now three variables, X, Y, and Z, and we also have uh, three variables in the UVW plane. And just like we could do uh, in the case of functions in two variables, we can write f of x, y, z as a function in the variables u, v, w, and uh, that's just using some function composition. We can write x as g of u, v, w, y as h of u, v, w, and k, or and z as k of u, v, w, and then uh, take the function for each of those coordinates. And this is a function that will be defined on the region G. So if you want to think about it in terms of where these functions are mapping things, we take a point in the UVW plane inside of our region G up here. And uh, these functions here, G, H, and K, are going to map that point over to the region D in the XYZ plane, or XYZ space. And then the function will be evaluated at that corresponding point x, y, z in uh, the Cartesian x, y, z space. So as long as these coordinate transformation functions g, h, and k have continuous first partial derivatives, then uh, we have the following relationship between these different integrals. So the integral or the triple integral of f of x, y, z over the region d in Cartesian x, y, z space is equal to the integral over uh, or the integral of f of g u v w h u v w and k of u v w multiplied by the absolute value of the Jacobian of the coordinate transformation over the region g in u v w space. Uh, and the only real difference here, this equation is is virtually identical to the equation that we had before for double integrals in the last video. Uh, the only difference here is that we have an extra variable to account for, and the Jacobian is now going to be uh, the determinant of a three by three matrix. So in the case of uh, the double integral, the Jacobian was the determinant of a two by two matrix, but now we have the determinant of a three by three matrix to make sure that we account for all of the partial derivatives and all of the variables x, y, z. Uh, and just like we had before, the Jacobian for the triple integral, we can also denote that with this expression here, this kind of partial x, y, z over partial u, v, w. Um, but the fact that now the Jacobian is the determinant of a three by three matrix uh, is often going to make the calculations uh, a bit more tedious and, and longer at different times. Uh, but we'll get into calculating some of those 
three by three or the determinants of those three by three matrices in the examples that we have below. All right, so we can start off uh, with an example similar to the first example we gave in the last video. Uh, remember from the last video, right after we defined Jacobian and, um, and got that relationship between the two different integrals, we showed that uh, the double integral in polar coordinates just follows from the equation that we developed using the Jacobian. And now we're going to do the same thing for both cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates. So the question here is uh, to find the Jacobian for the transformation from cylindrical coordinates to XYZ space um, by the uh, transformation functions here, X equals R times cosine theta, Y equals R times sine theta, and Z equals Z. So each of these equations is just a relationship um, that we had for cylindrical coordinates. And after that, we want to write uh, the triple integral of some function f of x, y, z over the region R in x, y, z space as an integral in cylindrical coordinates. So we start off by finding the Jacobian. Um, so this first entry here is going to be uh, the partial derivative of x with respect to R, and we get cosine theta, and we have the partial derivative of x with respect to theta. We get negative R sine theta, uh, we get zero when we take the partial derivative with respect to uh, with respect to z. So that'll be our first row of the matrix here. Uh, and using the same kind of arguments, we can get sine theta here. We get r times cosine theta here, and we get a zero. Uh, since the partial derivative of y with respect to z is going to equal zero. And then for z, uh, partial z with respect to x is zero, partial z with respect to y is zero, and partial z with respect to z is going to be equal to one. And from here, we want to take the determinant of this three by three matrix that was just constructed. So we can expand along the bottom row of the matrix here. This zero, zero, one looks nice. Um, this one is going to be positive if we were to checkerboard this matrix with plus and minus. Uh, and we get a 1 times the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix given by cosine theta minus r sine theta and then sine theta r cosine theta for the second row. And we have the uh, equation for finding the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So we have cosine theta times r cosine theta minus negative r sine theta times sine theta. And that'll give us this r cosine squared theta plus r sine squared theta. And again, we can factor out an r just like, uh, just like we did in the case of polar coordinates. We can factor out an r here, and the cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta will just go to 1, and we're left with this r. So the Jacobian is going to equal r. And now if we use the equation that we have here, relating the integral and Cartesian coordinates uh, to the integral under the coordinate transformation here. We find that the triple integral of f of x, y, z over the region r will be equal to the triple integral of f of r cosine theta, r sine theta, and z times r, where this r is coming from the Jacobian that we just calculated, um, over the region g inside of the Cartesian uh, r theta z plane. And now we can answer the same question for spherical coordinates as well. So in this next example, we want to find the Jacobian for the transformation from Cartesian rho phi theta space, representing spherical coordinates, to Cartesian xyz space. And then we want to write the corresponding integral. So the question is the same as the question we did before, but now we're doing it for spherical coordinates. Um, so we know that we have these relations uh, between the different variables. We have x equals r times cosine theta, y equals r times sine theta. Uh, these are equations that we know from polar and cylindrical coordinates. Uh, we also know that z is equal to rho times cosine phi. So this is an equation relating um, spherical coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. And we also know that r is equal to rho times sine phi. And taking all of these equations together, we want to ultimately find equations for x, y, and z uh, just in terms of cylindrical coordinates. 
So we can substitute rho sine phi for r in some of these equations that are showing up for x and y. And we get x is equal to rho times sine phi times cosine theta, y is equal to rho times sine phi times sine theta, and z is equal to rho times cosine phi. So these equations here are going to represent our coordinate transformation. Uh, and after we have that information, now we want to calculate the Jacobian, which again is going to be the determinant of a three by three matrix, um, where the entries are the different partial derivatives for our variables x, y, and z. So this first entry is going to be partial x with respect to rho, which is just sine phi times cosine theta. The second entry of the first row uh, will be x, or the partial derivative of x with respect to phi, and that'll give us rho times cosine phi times cosine theta. And the third entry of this first row uh, will be the partial derivative of x with respect to theta, which ends up being minus rho times sine phi times sine theta. Um, and again, you do the same process for the variable y in the second row, we get sine phi times sine theta as the first entry, rho times cosine phi uh, times sine theta as the second entry, and then rho times sine phi times cosine theta as the third entry. And if you wanna verify that these partial derivatives are correct, then you can just pause the video here and, uh, and compute the partial derivatives. And then finally, for the last row of our Jacobian matrix here, we have cosine phi as the first entry, and then minus rho times sine phi as the second entry, and zero as the last entry. Okay, so once the Jacobian matrix is set up, now we wanna find the determinant of this three by three matrix. Um, it's probably easiest to expand along this bottom row because then we can make use of the fact that we have a zero here, which is very nice. So this is going to be positive. This is going to be negative when we expand along that bottom row. Uh, and ultimately we get cosine phi times this two by two matrix here. Um, where we're taking entries from here, 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 and here. And then we have plus uh, rho times sine phi multiplied by the following two by two matrix. Uh, we take entries from here and here, and then uh, these guys over here as well. So that'll give us our second two by two matrix over here. And uh, once we get to this point, it really just ends up being uh, a bunch of algebra and tedious calculation, um, but that's okay. So again, now we have to calculate the determinants of these different two by two matrices that are showing up inside of our equation here. So we just use the formula that we have for two by two or for the determinant of two by two matrices. Uh, we get this cosine phi times rho squared, cosine squared theta, sine phi, cosine phi plus rho squared, sine squared theta, sine phi, cosine phi. Uh, and then for this um, second two by two matrix over here, when we take the determinant, we get rho times sine squared phi times cosine squared theta plus rho times sine squared phi times sine squared theta. And this is still all going to be multiplied by this uh, rho sine phi on the outside. Um, and for both of these expressions that I have underlined in red, there is a, it looks like there's a cosine squared theta and a sine squared theta that can be taken out of this first one. And then the second one, we also have, yeah, a cosine squared theta and a sine squared theta that can be taken out. Um, and we're just left with rho squared sine phi cosine phi and then rho times sine squared phi over here. And again, we can kind of combine these terms or, uh, or combine the expression here and, uh, and pull out another cosine squared phi, sine squared phi that we pull out down here and that's going to equal one as well. And ultimately just from some more algebra, we end up with rho squared times, uh, times sine phi. So, and because phi is going to be between zero and pi, sine phi is always going to be positive. And, uh, and of course, rho squared is always going to be uh, positive, or maybe I should say greater than or equal to zero. So for that reason, when we write this expression for the integral now down at the bottom, we don't have to worry about the absolute value signs for the Jacobian. 
But anyways, we end up with the triple integral of f of x, y, z over the region d in Cartesian x, y, z space is equal to the integral of f, and then for each of the x, y, z here, we plug in the corresponding coordinate transformation function times the uh, Jacobian, which we just calculated to be rho squared times sine phi. And again, we don't need absolute value signs here because rho squared times sine phi is always going to be positive over the region G in the uh, Cartesian rho phi theta space. Okay, finally, we can move to uh, the last example for this video here and the last example for all of chapter 15, I should say. Uh, and the goal here is to evaluate the following iterated integral. So we have the integral from zero to three of the integral from zero to four of the integral from x equals y over two to x equals y over two plus one of the function two x minus y over two plus z over three dx dy dz. Okay, and we want to evaluate by applying the transformation given by u equals 2x minus y over 2, v equals y over 2, and w equals z over 3. Okay, so uh, the first thing we want to do is try and sketch both of these regions. So we're going to want to sketch the region D that's being described um, in the integral that's given to us in the Cartesian XYZ plane. And we're also going to want to find the region G uh, in the corresponding UVW plane. So let's just start out with the region D here. Maybe I should even label this. This is the region D. Um, so this is similar to problems that we've done in previous sections already. We're just taking the limits of integration from our triple integral here and using them to draw the region D in space. Um, so the fact that uh, x equals y over two plus one, the upper limit for x here, uh, that implies that we have the line y equals two x minus two down in the plane. Uh, and because we're working in three dimensional space, this also means that z is free. So that this equation gives us a plane uh, that cuts through the line y equals 2x minus 2 uh, in the xy plane and is also parallel to the z-axis. Uh, and then we also have x equals y over 2, so this is the lower limit for x. That, of course, implies that y equals 2x, and I just rewrote them like this because it's easier to see what kind of lines we're talking about if they're in slope-intercept form. And again, for this here we have that z is free, so y equals 2x when z equals 0 describes a line in the plane, and because z is free, we can draw a plane that cuts through that line uh, and also goes through the z-axis, and that'll be uh, the surface for y equals 2x. So if you look over at the diagram here, I have y equals 2x minus 2 drawn in green, and I have y equals 2x drawn in red. And then I have planes that are coming out of um, coming out of those lines that are kind of parallel to the z-axis here. Uh, and we're also given from the triple integral that y is going to be between 0 and 4. So you can see I have y equals 0 and y equals 4 cutting off the, um, cutting off the region in the xy plane. And then we also have that z is going to go from 0 to 3 from this integral here. Um, and so we're only talking about this region above the xy plane uh, going up until we get to z equals 3. And it ends up looking like this kind of rectangular prism or trapezoidal prism type thing uh, that's going on. You can think about all of the space that's bounded by this purple box that I've drawn here. Okay, so that's going to be D in uh, the, the Cartesian xyz space. And now we want to move on to sketching G, the corresponding region in UVW space. So we are given, uh, we have the transformations given up here. And so I just wrote them um, again down here. We have U equals X minus Y over two. That's just another way to write two X minus Y over two 
Uh, and then we can immediately substitute a v in for that y over 2, and we find that x is equal to u plus v. So this is very similar to an example that we did in the last video, <clears throat> but we only talked about um, we only talked about regions in the plane because we were talking about uh, double integrals, not triple integrals, and now we have this extra z variable to account for. Uh, we still have that y equals 2 times v, and then we still have that z is going to equal 3 times w, because I think we're given, yeah, we're given that w is equal to, to z divided by 3. So we multiply by 3 to both sides. So after we have um, these transformations here, so we're writing x, y, and z as functions of u, v, and w, then we can take all of the important curves and bounds that are describing this region D, and we can transform them to the associated bounds and curves in, uh, in the variables U, V, and W. So we start off with Y equals 2X. Well, using our transformations, that means that 2V is equal to 2 times U plus V. And again, doing a little bit of algebra, that gives us that U equals 0. So the line... Um, y equals 2x is going to go to uh, the line u equals 0. And we also have that y equals 2x minus 2. Uh, it's going to go to 2v equals 2u plus 2v minus 2. Again, we're just substituting 2v for y and substituting u plus v for x, and we get u equals 1. Uh, y equals 0 corresponds with v equals 0. y equals 4 corresponds with v equals 2, uh, z equals 0 corresponds with w equals 0, and z equals 3 corresponds with w equals 1. Okay, so we can take uh, all of this information here and use it to draw our region in the UVW, in UVW space here. So this here is going to be our region G, and maybe I should put... Um, some bounds here. So this is u equals 1. Of course, we have u equals 0 at the origin. We have, this is uh, v equals 2. And then we also have w equals 1 up here. So that should hopefully give some of the dimensions of the box that we're talking about in uvw space now. Uh, and after we have this region, so that we know what we're talking about and we can find limits of integration, uh, we want to move on to calculating the Jacobian. So again, the Jacobian is going to be the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix consisting of the partial derivatives of x, y, and z with respect to u, v, and w, respectively, for different entries. So we start out with x, and uh, the partial derivative of x with respect to u is going to be 1. The partial derivative of x with respect to v is going to be 1. The partial derivative of x with respect to w is going to be 0. Uh, and again, we can calculate the partial derivatives for the second and third row here inside of the Jacobian matrix. And uh, we get 0, 2, 0 for the second row. We get 0, 0, 3 for the third row. And then we can calculate this determinant. Uh, and we get 2 times the determinant of the matrix 1, 0, 0, 3. And this will just equal 6. And finally, we can now write the original integral as uh, the new integral under this coordinate transformation. So we have that the original integral given to us is equal to the integral from 0 to 1, uh, because w is going to range from 0 to 1 inside of the box that I have drawn up here in the UVW plane, or UVW space. Uh, we have, so we have the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 2 of the integral from 0 to 1, uh, and again, the limits of integration for v are, u, are 0 to 2 because of the box up here. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, and the limits of integration for u are 0 to 1, again, because of the dimensions of the box up here. And this is all the integral of 6, which is our Jacobian, which we sneak in there, times u plus w, which is this function now written in terms of u and w, du, dv, dw. And from here, it just becomes a question of solving this iterated integral here. So we take the inner integral, uh, and we get 3u squared plus 6w times u evaluated from 0 to 1. Uh, we plug in 1 for u, 
and now we get the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 2 of 3 plus 6 times w dv dw. Again, we take the inner integral with respect to v, and we get 3 times v plus 6 times v times w evaluated from 0 to 2, and we can plug in 2 for v, and we're left with the integral from 0 to 1 of 6 plus 12w. Um, again, we take the antiderivative and get 6w plus 6w squared, and we evaluate from 0 to 1, and this will give us 12. So ultimately, this original integral, um, which may or may not be that difficult to solve in its own right, uh, ends up equaling 12. So hopefully this was some good information uh, for using coordinate transformations for triple integrals. Uh, and again, this is the last video for chapter 15. Um, so chapter 16 will begin on Monday, I think. So look out for that.